How do we implement the repository pattern in clean architecture correctly? The database is obviously located in the frameworks layer. The use case layer obviously defines how it would like to interact with the database by defining the repository interface. And so the repository implementation clearly will be between these layers in the interface adapters layer, right? But as we will see in a second, implementing such a repository correctly in the clean architecture is not as easy as it may seem initially. Let me explain using a concrete example and also make sure you watch till the end where I give you a simple guideline helping you to find the suitable repository design for your project. Let's go. The example project I have chosen to discuss this controversial topic of clean architecture is about managing backlogs of agile teams. Backlogs consist of work items and here we have three types, improvements, work packages and user stories, which have some fields like ID, title, description, iteration path and more. The application logic, the use case interactors, decide about ranking the work items, computes the cut line and calculates some further figures, and of course it also defines the interface to read the work items from some database. As database, let's assume we have some SQL database. So how do we implement the interface providing the work items from the database to the application logic? Easy, we just take one of the great object relational mapping frameworks like Entity Framework Core and let it do the magic for us. But that creates a problem. While such an implementation would perfectly fit to the understanding of adapters in the hexagonal architecture, in the clean architecture this implementation is violating the dependency rule, which is source code dependencies can only point inwards. But with this kind of repository implementation, the adapters layer has a dependency to an external framework and even does IO directly. So here the dependency points outwards. Now you may ask, okay, it has these dependencies, but those are fully encapsulated inside the class. So is there really a problem? Of course, there can only be one correct answer. It depends. Let's look at a few aspects. Actually, this dependency is not as encapsulated as it may look like, because the adapters project now has an external dependency. This means also other code in the adapters layer, other repositories, controllers, or any other adapter has the possibility to access the Entity Framework core library. Depending on the size of the project, the size of the team, the skills of the team, and depending on whether you have other dependency governance mechanisms in place, this may or may not be a problem. Another aspect is testing. We want our tests to be based on a specific API designed for tests, the testing API. How exactly a testing API should look like and how it should be designed is a topic of its own, which we will address in a separate video. We want this testing API to be based on the interface adapters layer for three reasons. First, interface adapters are more convenient for external drivers like tests. Actually, tests should be treated like a special kind of UI, so letting the tests interact with our system through the interface adapters layer perfectly fits into the concepts of the clean architecture. Second, having tests not directly coupled to the application logic gives us more freedom in refactoring the application design without impacting the tests. And third, having adapters included in regular acceptance tests means we have more code covered automatically and we need less additional integration or component tests. So if adapters have direct dependencies to external frameworks or perform I.O. directly, we either cannot use those in our acceptance tests or we make those tests more difficult and more complex as we include those external frameworks or even I.O. Again, depending on various factors, this might be an issue for your project or not. Do you agree with my analysis so far? How do you implement repositories in the clean architecture? Share your view in the comments below the video. Thank you. For the purpose of this tutorial, let's conclude that we want to keep the adapters layer free from such painful dependencies. What are alternative designs to be fully compliant with the dependency rule of the clean architecture? The first obvious and simple solution to respect the dependency rule is to move the repository implementation to the frameworks layer. The frameworks layer is often also called infrastructure layer, but I like to call it IO layer because that is what is happening there from perspective of the heart of the application. And with the current implementation of using entities directly for persistence, moving the repository implementation into this layer is probably a good and pragmatic solution, as there is anyhow no code for mapping data structures, what would be the key job of an adapter. In such a design, for our tests we would simply implement the repository interface again and use simple lists or dictionaries to manage the data. Now let's assume we cannot use the domain entities directly for persistence because we have decided to optimize our domain model to be maximum explicit and to make invalid states unrepresentable by using immutability and explicit value object types instead of primitives. At this point we will create data transfer objects, ETOs, which are optimized for data creation and persistence. 
and we would create these in the adapters layer so that we can use those for our tests and test APIs as well, because the usage of these DTOs might be more convenient in the tests than using the domain entities directly. In this decision, we also need code to convert DTOs to domain entities and vice versa. We could do this in the existing repository class in the IO layer directly, but this would cause significantly more code in the IO layer, which is not desired because this code is coupled to the external framework and so it would be impacted when the framework has to be changed and this code is not automatically part of acceptance tests, which we want to be based on the interface adapters layer. Depending on the size and the complexity of the domain entities and their conceptual difference to the persistence optimized DTOs, there might be much more code needed to create and validate these domain entities than sketched in this simple example. So at that point, we decide to create a real adapter in the adapters layer, which then does the mapping between the DTOs and the domain entities. We then also need a slim interface to retrieve the DTOs from the database, from the entity framework core in this example. In the adapter, we would use link U to still get efficient database queries without causing dependencies to entity framework core or the database. With this change, now also the implementation in the IO layer becomes very simple and slim again. We only have the code there, which really needs to be dependent on the entity framework and the database. For the test, we would then reuse the DTOs and the repository implementation from the adapters layer, including all the domain entity creation and validation logic. We only have to provide a fake implementation of the iDatabase interface using simple collections, which also makes this fake implementation simple and slim again. At that point, we have implemented the full pattern of data access, how it is described in the clean architecture. Our implementation is fully compliant with the dependency rule. DTOs and their mapping to domain entities is located in the interface adapters layer, and we have minimal code in the I.O. layer. But what if we cannot or do not want to use an object rational mapping framework? How would the setup look like then? Actually, it would look quite similar. We could decide to just implement our existing iDatabase interface and keep all the SQL code in the I.O. layer. This approach would encapsulate this database technology completely and we could easily switch to, for example, a document database by just replacing this one implementation with another one. The drawback would be that the amount of code in the I.O. layer is significantly increased. Remember, we wanted to minimize the code there to reduce additional testing effort and to have less code depending on a particular technology. To address this drawback, we could decide to move all the knowledge about the database schema and the SQL queries to the adapters layer. For that, we would change the iDatabase interface to operate on SQL strings. We also would change the DTOs to be much simpler and much closer to the concept of tables and records so that we can have all the mapping logic in the adapters layer. This decision would make the repository implementation in the I.O. layer much simpler and more generic again. The downside of this approach is that the adapter now depends on the SQL technology. For testing, we would probably use an in-memory database, which makes the test setup more complex and probably slower, but also allows testing the SQL statements implicitly during acceptance tests. Nevertheless, this approach might be beneficial when we want to connect to an external service, which works in a similar way, like Azure DevOps. This approach would encapsulate any compile time dependency to Microsoft APIs in the I.O. layer. We could use the SQL-like work item query language to query for work items where the return types from these APIs are dictionary-like generic data containers which perfectly match our generic work item DTO. We would have all the logic to read and interpret the data of the work item DTO as well as for creation of the domain entities in the adapters layer, which is part of the regular acceptance tests. Using these simple work item DTOs in our tests could even make the data setup for the tests easier, as we could just read some real data from Azure DevOps once and use this data one-on-one -on -one in the tests without the risk of setting up invalid test data as no kind of data conversion is needed. Having read Uncle Bob's book, Clean Architecture, meanwhile already two times, I got the impression that he would always favor the full solution, where the mapping of DTOs to entities and vice versa happens in the interface adapters layer, and the code in the I.O. layer is minimal. Myself, I haven't found the silver bullet yet. I use different approaches and different projects depending on the project size, the team size, the complexity of the domain model, and so on. But here's a guideline I use to stick to the dependency rule, as well as to make a pragmatic design choice. First, isolate any third-party framework. Do not expose any framework types to make it easy to replace it whenever you want to or need to. Second, keep the interface adapters project free from any painful dependency to keep your test setup simple and clean. Third, minimize the amount of code in the I.O. layer to reduce the risk and the effort for additional testing. And fourth, 
Base the testing API on the interface adapters layer to include data mapping logic in your acceptance tests. And if you now want to know how to set up and scale a project in the clean architecture, then watch this video next.